Hey guys, how are you? It's Brandon Miller here. All right. So, uh, big announcements. As of yesterday, we had the Immigration Levels Plan come out. That's right, Valentine's Day. So, a little bit of love from the government. Uh, they uh, they put out their Immigration uh, Levels Plan. So, there was some love in some certain areas, and there was some there was not so so much love there too. But we're gonna go through that because I want to make sure that you understand some of this stuff and you understand how it's gonna impact you. All right. So, Immigration Levels Plan. Again, another reference that's timely. It's the Super Bowl of immigration, right? This is the big one. And the reason that this is so important is, is that it allows us to get some insight on where the government's going with their immigration uh, levels and where they're going to divvy those up. So let me just explain that a little bit for you. So normally what happens is, is picture like this all being immigration, right? And there's certain pillars in certain areas of immigration right? The immigration department has to divvy up the applications to. So for instance, we got this little chunk over here is family class. And then we've got the economic class, right? And then we've got like the protected persons and, and refugees and, and, and so on and so forth, right? And then into those classes, they're going to divide those up even further depending on the program. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Okay. So there's a few things that are going on and I just want to kind of you know, dispel all that. But before I dive into this, this isn't going to be a very long video. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and give you predictions. I'm going to give you some, right? Because I think it's a little too early as well, because I think that, you know, what we've seen the last year or so with immigration, the department's been very nimble. And what I mean by that is, is like you look at like the TR to PR program, for instance, that whole program was invented very quickly it was put together to meet these levels, okay? Now, what does that mean? So, well, we're gonna dive into it right now. So let me tell you a few things. I got a few notes in front of me here too, so I'm gonna talk about that. So the immigration levels plan is for 2022 to 2024, right? And if you notice, they generally have these for a couple of years out, and they're gonna, they're gonna divide everything up, and they can change, right? So it was announced yesterday, Valentine's Day, and the plan was to target uh, the invitation of 1.3 million people to Canada as permanent residents by 2024. Now, if you've looked at the previous uh, immigration levels plans, you'll notice that those, those numbers have actually gone up a little bit, right? And these are the goals for the next three years. So 2022, 2023, and 2024. All right. Their immigration targets and their how the department is going to deal with uh, deal with different issues like processing times, backlogs, lack of economic draws. OK, there I said it. All right. We're going to talk about that a little bit, too. That's basically their kind of plan for all of this stuff. All right. So let's dive in. Good news. The number of people that they're going to invite is going up. OK, so that's a good thing. Right. 430,000 immigrants are, are allowed to apply for PR uh, with the number increasing until 2024. So I think that that's actually a good thing because we actually are seeing uh, these targets increase a little bit. But it's the distribution of the targets that are actually a little bit kind of troubling uh, and things like backlogs. I don't like to say that because now we've heard about backlogs. All right. Um, Yes. The, and, and if you've been watching this, there was uh, there was a little gift that was uh, put out by a very prominent BC lawyer who came out and he did an access to information request and he found out that, you know, things are going to change. It was a bit of a preview of what we're going to talk about today. All right. So the numbers are going to be the result of economic growth. Uh, they're going to look at the recovery from the COVID pandemic. Right. And most importantly is the number of workers to retiree ratio, which actually is going to be three to one. Now, if you've heard me speak before, I like actually speaking about this because this is really the basis of why we're bringing people to Canada, right? I always say it's a bit of a pyramid scheme that we're running here. And the reason is, is because we got workers, right? And the workers are actually here and they're taking care of all those retirees. And you know, all those great benefits that we have here, like health care, you know, unemployment insurance, all of those great things. Well, guess what? Somebody has to pay for them, right? So it's got to be workers. And those workers are generally younger people because we don't see like 80 and 90 year olds working, right? So we've got an aging population. We have to bring in people. So the thing is, is in the 70s, 
it was like six to one workers for every six workers for every one retiree and we're on trajectory to be like i think we're at three to one or four to one right now and if we don't do anything by 2035 we're going to be at like two to one which doesn't make this whole place sustainable that's why i call it a bit of a pyramid scheme right like as you move up for it we need the people down below to kind of pay for it we need workers now there's some good news and there's some bad news. Now I'm going to go through it and I just want you to, you know, I just want you to be aware of it. All right. So the 430,000 uh, person goal broken down by immigration category. All right. I want to talk about that because 60% of those admissions uh, are going to come through the economic programs. So over 241,000, I think it's uh, 241,850 uh, is going to come from the economic category. Um, the federal high skilled, which is the federal skilled worker, the CEC and the federal skilled trades is about 55,000, 55,900. Actually, I got it right there. 55,900 uh, people will come under that category. So what does that mean? All right. That's express entry. Now there's the PMPs under express entry and I'll talk about that in a little sec. Uh, but man, that's actually, they've, they've cut those numbers quite a bit. And if you've been watching these things, like, you know, I know most immigration professionals have and most immigration aspirants have that are, that are watching these numbers, uh, that's actually really low, okay? They haven't done a draw on express entry, uh, or sorry, they haven't done a draw for federal skilled worker since like December 2019, right? And they haven't, or sorry, sorry, excuse me, December 2020, Right. And they haven't done a draw for CEC since September or since September 2021. That's not my dates there. And federal skilled trades. I'm not even sure when the last one was, but it was a long time ago. Um, it's a little bit troubling to me on a number of different things, because I don't think on a number of different levels. I, I'm you know, there's a lot of people that are overseas and I, I that are uh, that have a lot of skills that they can add to this place. There's a lot of people that have been waiting patiently. And one of the things that, you know, uh, we kind of pride ourselves on in Canada a little bit is like, wait your turn and we'll get to you. Right. I had a problem when they actually canceled those applications about 10 years ago under the, the federal skilled worker, if any of you remember that. Um, because I, I just thought it wasn't something that should be done. Now, express entry was supposed to solve all of this, but we kind of find we're back in the same thing with backlogs. And I'm going to, I'm going to throw my two cents in on that in a second, but here's the thing. Okay. Um, that's actually a very short sighted thing. And I'm very disappointed that they did that. Um, now there's going to be things where it's going to have to pivot. And we see the TR to PR program that has, you know, another 40,000 people in that, but the problem with that is, is that we're catering to people who are already here in Canada. Now that's a good thing, right? I know there's a lot of students that will come here with designs on PR and different things. And I'm all for people that are going to come here. They're going to get a foothold and then, you know, get up and work. And I guess that's good for the government too, because they're going to save money on settlement services and bringing people in and frustrations and all that. So I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with that. However, I still think that there's a lot of people uh, that, you know, are waiting from overseas and have been waiting patiently in the draw that actually should be addressed. And hopefully that's going to happen soon. Now, I know with COVID, there were issues with the border. And one of the things that the government uh, found was that it was easier to land people who are already in Canada, um, you know, because quite frankly, they didn't have to deal with border restrictions. So I understand that. And that's kind of what the TR to PR program is all about. However, uh, I know that, you know, personally, I'm dealing with some very talented people uh, that are in the FSW draw and they've been sitting there for a little while. Um, and quite frankly, you know, these guys, these guys would fit perfectly into the fabric of Canada as well. Okay. So it is a little bit troubling. Um, you know, I've got people in medical sciences, I've got people in pharmaceuticals, I've got people in it, uh, all of these different things that are important. Uh, and, and we haven't even started talking about like the shortage of nurses and other allied, allied health professionals as well. So again, I think that's a bit of a misstep in that respect because we're, we're kind of not allowing people from overseas that entry point as well. Uh, and not everybody wants to come here and go to school and be able to do that. We're missing out on a lot of skills uh, in that respect. And I think that that's, this levels plan for this year is going to miss that. 
Now, the reason that this has happened is, is because of the backlog. And I'm still scratching my head on that, guys, quite frankly. If anybody from the government's listening to this, why did we do a draw for 27,000 people in February 13th, you know, 2021? All the CEC people with the 75, right? The whole idea was to control the backlog. You just created one. I don't understand. But anyways, look, I don't want to be negative, but I'm just, if somebody can explain that to me, I'm going to ask that question uh, again and again. I can't, I can't get an answer for that. All right, let's keep moving. Federal business screams, a thousand. What are we doing? I like business people, right? I love it. And quite frankly, what are we doing? Like really, what are we doing? You know, this is ridiculous. We need, we should be bringing in people who can spur on investment and create more opportunity. That's the whole idea behind the startup visa. The wait times with that right now, I actually don't even, uh, I don't even work in that as, as much because quite frankly, the wait times are just, it's just too long. So again, I know sometimes that sometimes when people are coming in with business, you know, it's like, oh, these guys are buying the way into Canada and this and that. You know what? No, they're not. You know, there's a lot of people that are coming in here with with uh, really good skills and business acumen. And I think we should we should embrace that a little bit more, especially in the ac economic times that we're in and different things. I think, you know, spurring on new ideas. So I'm scratching my head on that thousand. I wish there was a little bit more. And I think that really is a missed opportunity. OK, pilot programs, agri food, caregiver. Um, listen, I've worked a lot in the caregiver program, and this is another head scratcher for me. Uh, I've progressively seen this, you know, progressively get sillier and sillier. And if, if anybody is really aware of what's going on, and I know that I speak with a lot of people, there is a real shortage of care. The pandemic has pushed a lot of people inside uh, outside of the long term care facilities in some respects, and they're looking for alternatives of care. Um, with the home child care provider and the home uh, support. Nobody's entered the country in that program in, what, two years? Those files have been sitting in Edmonton collecting dust. Okay, now listen, I, I get it. There's a pandemic and we've got paper-based and we're going to see all these great things. But the real need for people is, is they need care for their elder, uh, their elder family members or somebody with high medical needs or their children and they can't find it, right? And if I, I, the reason I'm so passionate about this is, is because I'm getting all of the, I get calls. Like I'll get really emotional calls of like people that can't find the care. I spoke with a lady today who's trying to go back to school and she's looking for care for her five and two year old, can't find it, really needs somebody to come in and take care of the kids because it's to accommodate her going back and getting retrained in a medical profession, I might add. Um, she's, she's exhausted all these different pathways. It's, it's crazy. So there's a ton of those stories and I really, really, really hope that the caregiver program, it is still a pilot program. I hope they're going to revisit it and kind of go back to how that used to be. Uh, because I can tell you that, uh, it's a good opportunity for people to come here, get working, reunite with families and all of the other stuff. But at the same time too, there's a huge benefit. And with the aging population we have, I wish those numbers would really go up, okay? And in case you wanna fact check that, the home, uh, the home uh, childcare was filled like in under a week. Like it was just, it was all that because those applications are stacked up and there's such, there's such a need for that, okay? And we haven't even talked about the aging population. All right, Atlantic Immigration Program. Um, you know what? I'm a real fan of this. Uh, and the reason I'm a fan of this is, now 62,500 is for this program. I'm a fan of this because the East Coast is great, okay? And when people are coming to Canada and they're like, oh, where should I go? Go East. Go East, young friend. Uh, it's, you know, this is, this is, in my opinion, this is a really good program. There's a lot of, like, um, how is it? How can I say? It's really community driven uh, in terms of what are the needs for the local region, um, you know, and there's been a shrinking population and whatnot there, too. But I like how it's employer driven. Um, it's kind of I don't want to say loose, but it's looser in terms of what can be designated in terms of the jobs and, and, and different things under the program. Um, but I just think that it's uh, I just think this makes a lot of sense. And I hope I hope 
that program will flourish, it will expand. And we can see this you know, in different areas of the country as well, meeting maybe different needs for industry specific type stuff. Okay, PMPs. Now, uh, what can I say about PMPs? So PMPs, uh, I, like, I, I like where the PMPs are going in terms of how they're offering things. If you've heard me speak before, I'm not a real fan of PNPs, okay? Now I know I'm gonna get like, you know, booed and hissed for that boo, or like what are you talking about? There are certain provinces I do like and certain streams I really do like, uh, but some of them I don't, okay? And I'm not gonna call any out, but that's where it is. Like, you know, for instance, some of the business streams under some of the provinces, you know, you gotta jump through a thousand different hoops uh, to be able to do that. It doesn't make sense. Like it really doesn't make sense. And if I was in the position of being able to do that and open a business and going through all these different checks and balances with people who may or may not understand my business, while my business future and my PR future is kind of hanging in the balance, eh, don't really like that. But either way, there's a number of different streams and there's a few provinces which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call out here, which have really good streams. You know, there's some new IT pilots and different things that are coming out as well, or that have come out. Uh, and, and again, these are great. Like, these are great. I hope they'll expand that. Um, I will say this though, uh, what you're gonna see is I think that you're gonna see a lot of people pivot. And yes, I know we all hate that word. It's like a COVID word, right? Uh, a lot of people are gonna pivot from that. Okay, and they're gonna pivot uh, to PMPs. And one of the things that I've always, uh, you know, it's been always bothersome to me about PMPs was the low quantity. But now what you're seeing is, is you got 83,500 people for PMPs, right? That have just, uh, th that's the quota under the, the, the plan here. And you got 55,900 uh, under federal skilled worker. So it's flipped, you know, surprise. Okay, family, 105,000. Look, spouses are gonna sponsor, we're gonna sponsor kids, we're gonna do all of that. Great, that's where that little chunk is. Remember the little slices I was talking about? Refugees and protected persons, 76,000. Okay, so here's the thing, right? Um, there's a number of people that are sitting in the system right now that have been backed up with that. There was a number of different initiatives uh, that have gone on with like Afghanistan and whatnot. Now. Uh, I don't really want to delve into that too much. I can tell you though what I know um, from that and, and speaking with some people in the government. Um, it's, it's very sad they were caught off guard and not by any you know, fault of their own and they had to really invent a lot of these bridges for people to be able to get that. Okay, um, you know, I can tell you I've, I've spoken to some people that uh, are, have been working with the department for many, many years. And this has been one of the more challenging things they've ever had to deal with. So, you know, what can I say? I think refugees and protected persons uh, is is something that, you know, I, I'm proud that Canada does. Um, and I'm proud that, uh, you know, there's, there's a good spot in there for that. So I got no critique of that whatsoever, all right? HNCs, humanitarian and compassion, another area I think I think is absolutely fantastic that uh, we take into we take into account. Uh, I know I've done a few of these over the years, and and I'll tell you, uh, some some of them you know to this day still choke me up, uh, like for real. So, you know, I, it's just something that's absolutely fantastic. Um, those those I got no. I have no issue with whatsoever. It's just the economic side of thing, guys. I wish that we had, uh, I wish we had those backlogs a little bit more controlled and we could kind of see that because I think it's backlog is the bad word, right? It's the bad word. All right, <sighs> let's talk about a few other things. All right, French speakers. Having 4.4% French speaking immigrants outside of Quebec by 2023. Now here's the thing. We are a bilingual country, in case you didn't know, all right? So a lot of people think that, um, you know, it's all in Quebec. That's actually not true, right? What's the only bilingual province in Canada? Hint, go look it up. It ain't Quebec, all right? Go take a look. There's other pockets of French all over Canada. Um, 
and there's been a real push for this. And if you look at like the TR to PR program, for instance, they had unlimited opportunity for French speakers under those categories. Look at the numbers. There was there was not a lot of numbers there. It's a couple thousand here and there in the different categories, which is crazy. So, you know, again, I think it's great if you're a French speaker and you speak really well, good opportunity for you. And I can tell you also this, if you really delve into some of the streams, there's all these little streams that are hidden in the PMPs and stuff for French speakers, right? Something to look at. You know, one of the things I can tell you about this immigration levels plan and about where things are going, you're going to have to, it's not just like fill it out, do your stuff on express entry and, you know, get drawn and do all this. That's not how this is all going to work, right? You're going to have to get a lot more strategic. And this is kind of what I'm all about too, is, is you got to have a plan, you got to be able to implement, and then you got to settle here and do well. Okay. That's the whole premise for, you know, second passport. That's what I wrote that for, okay? That's what it's all about. You gotta have that. So I think the plan right now is actually going to have to be, um, you're gonna have to have a lot more, it's gonna have to be a lot more nimble. Um, and you're also gonna have to, uh, you know, keep your eyes open for the different opportunities as, as they come up. Um, the goal is right now is they're going to be granting PR to people already in Canada as temporary residents. Okay. That's what they're going to do. Um, they got a huge backlog. They have to do that. Okay. A lot of these guys are students. Uh, and, and again, a lot of students got the raw end of the deal with COVID. They came here, they were on track to do whatever the CEC love the CEC program, because quite frankly, it just makes sense. People can come here, they can go to school, they can get trained, they can enter the workforce and they can get up and running and remember aging population and getting workers. You gotta pay tax for all that stuff to work, right? Um, the other thing is, is returning to the 12 months processing for spousal and child sponsorships. Thank you, right? Thank you. I can tell you this, guys. Uh, I know and I, I, I retell this story quite a bit, okay? Um, when I'm working with uh, people, especially uh, spouses and stuff, I'm not blind to the fact that it takes, um, you know, uh, how how the hardship is. Okay, and if you, if you hop on Twitter and no, don't go on there. It's really angry and stuff. But there's a lot of people that are angry about not being reunited with their spouses, and I get it. I can tell you, I remember um, I sponsored my wife, and I remember those backlogs. I remember how troubling they were, and I, I'm still not happy with the fact that I had to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for the birth of my child because my wife was waiting for OHIP, which was caught in a long thing. And as somebody who's a multi-generational Canadian who has always understood healthcare, having to pay cash for the birth of my second child still kind of grates me because the immigration system was slow. OK, so I empathize and I understand and I'm happy to hear that. And uh, it's it's going to be a good thing. Reuniting families and all that other stuff. Right. OK. One of the other goals is is granting PR uh, to refugees working in healthcare in Canada. Fantastic, guys. Look, there's a lot of people that really dug in during um, uh, during COVID and, and whatnot. Uh, which has been fantastic. And I think, you know, you know, if people are going to, if people are going to step up like that, then, you know, power to them. Uh, I was happy to see some of those programs and some of those initial things. I'm a little confused about some of the niche programs that they've come out with. Um, but uh, anyways, I think that that's certainly something that's, that's nice. All right. So how are they going to handle the numbers? Let's talk about that really quickly. Now, to support these large numbers, the government previously announced the modernization of the immigration system to lower processing times and improve client experience. OK, I love it because, quite frankly, some of the older things that we have uh, that are out there in terms of uh, the, the rep portal and my CIC, it's old, it's antiquated. And I never forget, I was at a, I was at an immigration conference in the fall and uh, the director general was speaking and somebody stood up and said, can you explain what that gateway error is? The bad gateway error 505 or whatever it is. Everybody laughed because we all know it. Um, but I can say, right, understanding what it is and, you know, you hear things 
the government has actually contracted this out to people who know what they're doing in IT. Uh, and it looks like we're getting better portals. Now we have a whole list of them, right? There's uh, somebody had put something together, which was a whole list of all the different portals. It seems there's a different portal here and there. Hopefully sometime these will all kind of come together, but apparently it's a, it's a big five to seven year plan to be able to do this. So I think really we're going through the bit of a tough time now. I'm still scratching my head on the backlog thing, why we created that, because it's just kind of like we don't learn from the past. Um, you know, we got to learn the history. The whole purpose of express entry was, is to get rid of the backlog. Yes. I'm going to dive into that more. Uh, I really, really think that we need to continue with express entry draws, including the FSW to meet the numbers. The draws have been paused for a while, guys. And I can tell you that there's, you know, I'm going to have to sit down and strategize with a lot of people because, you know, that's it. Now, my thoughts on this, I'm going to, I'm going to dive into this because I want to say a few things. First off, uh, a, don't despair, okay? First off, um, there's people that uh, I've been corresponding with over the last day or two, and I'm gonna continue oh, probably over the next week because I have to revisit it. We're gonna have to look at what the plan was uh, previously, taking into account this new information, and also uh, we're gonna have to look at um, alternatives, okay? There's a number of different uh, programs out there and there's always opportunity you just have to know how to find what's right for you okay one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they read something online and they take somebody's very unique and personalized situation at a given time and they put it into their own situation when that actually might not even be relevant okay this whole immigration levels plan has changed all of that and I want you to know that I want you to know whatever plan that you had previous and whatever you're going to have now, it's probably going to be different. And you're going to have to start, you know, looking into things like the PMPs. And again, I know I've always stayed away from that stuff because I've, I've had people that, you know, I'm like, turn it down. You don't need it. You're going to get this anyways, because express entry was always there. And why would you go and spend all this money on another application and have to do all of this other stuff when you didn't need it, right? Different days now, guys, different days, okay? So we're gonna have to, I, I wore short sleeves for this one because we're gonna have to roll up our sleeves and we're gonna have to make sure that we have a really solid plan so that you can be able to meet that. Now, the bad news is, is that you're going to have more steps to go through. The good news is, is that if you're in Canada, uh, the government has acknowledged that. They've acknowledged that, um, you know, a lot of the students that have come here and, and are working and doing different things and, and they're giving them extra intern provisions and different things like that. Uh, the TR to PR program was a fantastic example of that. I think those are all great, okay? But again, I do not wanna forget the people that are overseas and the talent that's there uh, and the people that are just as uh, just as worthy of, of being here as well and, and being selected under, under one of these spots, okay? Um, Lastly, what I want to say to you is this, is guys, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of like noise and there's going to be a lot of people talking and talking and talking about this. Okay. There's people that are already giving different opinions and that stuff, right? Here's what we know. We know that there's a ton of, we know that there's a ton of jobs out there and I'm telling you LMIAs, LMIAs are back, you know, well, they were always there, but now they're back. Like, you know, there's a real shortage in the job market. And I know that people know this, right? I know especially that the government knows this because I know some very, very senior people there that were commenting about different restaurants that were going out of business because they couldn't find staff. Now, some people will say, oh, it's because they can't pay the person or this or that. Guys, we just went through a pandemic. Think of the restaurant owner too, right? They're trying to make it go. A lot of people have left that. I don't know how I got on food service. It exists all over the place, right? couple of years ago in certain areas, people would be asking me, oh, can I get an LMIA? I'm like, no, man, it's not going to work. Now, yeah, you know, things, uh, all bets are off. So that's a positive. So you got LMIAs. Uh, and remember, it might take you a little bit away, but think of it this way. If you come to Canada and you're on a work permit anyways, you're already logging time towards your, um, uh, you're already logging time towards your citizenship if that's your end goal, right? Remember, uh, you get credit 
you know, half days upwards of a year for time that you spend in Canada prior to becoming a permanent resident. So that's one thing. So that's a benefit. You can lessen the time there a little bit. Also, you can get settled in and you can do, uh, you know, it's a bit of a soft landing because you're coming with a job. Uh, also, look at the level plans. Look at the levels plan. You're here, you're working towards something, right? And then the plan is supposed to go up. Hopefully, 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 we get rid of the backlogs, right? And we actually get this stuff solved. That's what I wanna see. I hate that word. And you know what? I've been around long enough that I've seen this happen and repeat itself. And it's just like, what are we doing? Why are we doing this, okay? Anyways, listen, I don't want to gripe about it because there's a lot of opportunity here. You need a plan, okay? You've got to have your plan. And your plan has to be nimble and you also have to be aware of what's going on and you got to look around. The people that are going to be successful with this are going to be those people. They're going to know what's going on and they're going to know where the opportunity is. They're not going to follow the herd, okay? This is another trap. Do not do that. Cut down on the noise, sit down and put your plan together, right? That's it, that's all you need to do, okay? So other than that, um, I don't think there's much else to tell you. I thought I was gonna do something that was really quick here, uh, but apparently not. Uh, this was, uh, I guess we're coming up on 30 minutes, actually we're, I think we're over 30 minutes, but either way, it doesn't matter uh, because what I wanted to do was, is I wanted to give you some, uh, some commentary on this and I also, want to tell you, uh, you're going to read a lot of stuff. You're going to hear a lot of stuff. Take it all with a grain of salt, because again, these are all just predictions. Some of them are very well reasoned. I've looked at some of the other stuff that other people are saying. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, and I like some of the commentary because it actually does sit down and cut through some of the noise. But I want you to run your own race. I want you to have your plan. I want you to look where the opportunities are. And I'll give you a hint. It's going to be an LMIAs in that labor market that's desperately looking for workers. Um, and that's it. All right. So uh, you're going to hear some more comment from me throughout the time uh, on this stuff. All I can tell you is this. Guys, don't lose hope if, if you, you know, have been sitting there for a while. I know that there's a lot of people that have. Okay. Things will all work out as they will. Okay, have your plan, put it all together. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, let us know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that stuff. Uh, and if you have any comments, put them below. I'd love to hear them. Uh, and if you agree with what I'm saying or do don't agree, that's fine too. That's fine too. It's all it's all a part of a dialogue here. All right, everybody, I, uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for uh, listening. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, again, my name is Brandon Miller uh, and here to chat. All right. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.